Hello, everyone. I am Jasmine Brene, a speaker and women's life coach. I help women regain their power so that they can embrace individuality while living with intention. I'm so certain about who I am as an individual woman and my purpose in life that nobody, not anyone, can knock me off of my path. It took me a long time to get where I am. And as a matter of fact, it was recently, maybe um, three to four years ago. In the end, I realized that I was doing myself a major disservice by conforming to social norms and suppressing who I really was inside. And that's what we'll discuss today. So as a young woman at the age of 14 and 15, I remember how much popularity and conformity meant to me and who I considered my friends in high school. If I wanted to maintain my status amongst my friend group, I had to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, act a certain way. And for a long time, I was okay with that. I, of course, was a young-minded and, and, and individual and didn't think much past life, past high school. My conformity regularly got me in trouble with my mother. And as all of our mothers were, they were young ones. And she's familiar with the distractions that a young woman can have. She and the village it took to raise me exhausted every single effort to make sure I made something of myself. At the age of 16, my mother was able to get me a car. I had a 2008 white Suzuki Aereo. It was cute and fast and back when gas was like, a dollar, more than a dollar. Um, I was running up and down the road all the time with my friends, driving everywhere. Me and my friends were flying down to Notch Road and Hard Scrabble Road, two roads that anybody in Columbia, South Carolina will see everybody in Columbia, South Carolina. My mother later told me that it was her friends, my village, her gym partners, co-workers, our neighbors, my friends' friends, uh, her friends' friends, everybody. They told her that Hey, I've just seen Jazzy flying down to an ashram with a bunch of people in the back. If she would have told me at that time at 15 years old and a young minded Jasmine, I would have been furious and wondered why folks always in my business. But now I just laugh. I will forever be grateful for my village. They never gave up on me. That trouble I got into and the popularity I was so determined to maintain got me sent to the U.S. Army. My parents didn't think I was mature and responsible enough to go to college. I really couldn't blame them. We had visited the, United, the University of South Carolina, Hampton University in Virginia, and numerous smaller colleges in and around South Carolina. All colleges that were somewhat prestigious in their own way and were not inexpensive institutions. Neither of my parents saw the point of making such a large investment when I had demonstrated that I was not focused at all. I remember feeling so bad, so, so bad about how I had disappointed my parents and how I was missing an opportunity to experience college after high school with my peers. But after all, I wasn't looking to gain more knowledge on a specific subject or a specific concentration. I was looking for the experience, right? Not focused. So I joined the US Army at the age of 17. My parents had to sign for me. I couldn't do it because I was not yet 18. What an experience, the yelling, the screaming, the long days full of intense training and challenges that I thought I would never ever be able to, to conquer, right? Being told what to do all day long, when to wake up, when to eat, when to use the restroom. It was a lot to adapt to. Joining the Army forced me to separate from those friends, those distractions, those boys back at home. I remember always wondering, what they were doing and if they had thought of me and what speaks to that is that I rarely got many letters from them. So it explains it. When I joined the military in 2010, it was the first time that I was amongst so many different people of various backgrounds. I was one of three or four black girls amongst the sea of majority white people. I did not feel a pressure to be popular or fit in amongst the other female trainees. No, we were just trying to survive, so we didn't have to be recycled. We were just trying to make it out of there, okay? <laughs> we cried, laughed, sang together. It was there that I recognized the importance of community from my own perspective. Training was a major point of growth for me, but it came to an end, thankfully, right? Well, it was really, really brutal. It was when I got my freedom back and immersed myself back into 
um, the civilian world, the, the world out there, and I fell back into the conformity and popularity mindset. That mindset allowed me to consume, it consumed me in high school. But there have been two very distinct love and life experiences that I excel, that have accelerated the realization of my own power. With love surfaced the consciousness of my individuality, uniqueness and self-worth, and with life gave clarity to my dreams of making an impact and leaving a legacy that stretches to the ends of the earth. First was when I met and married the man that I thought was the love of my life at the age of 19. I had prayed for this very man. You see, he was tall, dark, and handsome, even spoke a foreign language, and I had prayed for all of that. God sent me that. I swear to you, God sent me that. I think he was trying to teach me a lesson because what I prayed for is what I got. What I prayed for was popular. What I prayed for was socially acceptable to my family and friends. Because I married what was my type, I became empty, felt worthless, confused, and in pain. A lot of pain, physically and emotional pain. And I was always concerned about what he was doing. So I couldn't focus on my work, on myself. I couldn't even think of starting a business. I couldn't even think of going to college. One day I just got fed up and I ended it. I just left, never went back. You'll gain the strength to do to do that one day too, sis. I promise you. But my second and final husband, I almost let get away. When he tried to pursue me, I constantly pushed him away. He was one of the most persistent men I had ever come in contact with in my adult life. He wasn't pushy, he didn't rush me. He knew I was going through a divorce and that I was a wreck. He knew I had to turn to unhealthy ways of coping and he coached me through that. He was patient. The more and more time we spent together, my self-esteem improved and grew. And I remember saying to myself, hold up. I feel like a queen right now, I feel worth it. This is uncomfortable. I, I don't want this, I can't do this. And although I felt so good, so special, so supported, I didn't feel like I could marry him because still, in my mind, I was in the wrong place. This man wasn't my type, right? He was white. He was the same height as me. He wasn't cultured enough. What would my 90-year-old Black grandmother from the South say about this? Hell, what would society say about it? Our love wasn't popular. But I thank God that every, every day, I thank God that I ignored what anyone else would have to say about my marriage. I thank God that I prioritize my own happiness because there's no way that I would be as certain of myself as I am almost eight years later. Second was when I earned the opportunity to go to college. I had spent six or so years in the military and competed and earned a scholarship to pay my, my full ride. Not, I had to pay nothing out of pocket. I earned that. I spent hours trying to determine what I was going to study. And originally I had made a decision based on my love for Grey's Anatomy and the successful career I had watched my mother have throughout her life. I thought I studied nursing. And the good Lord knows that I had no interest in that. I didn't have a love for medicine or science. I had a mindset change that provided me with a little clarity on what my impact was gonna be in this world. I was always asking my family about where we came from, and they never really could tell me anything past my grandmother, my, my only living grandmother. That's when I determined that I would study history with a concentration on Black American history. And oh my goodness, making the decision to study Black people and become a historian was and is one of the most fulfilling things I have ever done. I've learned so much about way beyond the notable, the great Dr. Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. There's so many other people that we gotta know. By those two prominent moments in my life, I have been propelled to really understand my value and my worth. As a result, that realization gave me freedom to receive and embrace the legacy I am meant to have on this earth. Embracing who I am, and outwardly projecting my individuality has not been easy, but I try my absolute best to keep power, the acronym power, at the forefront of my mind. The power breakdown, pink, purpose, working intently to find it, 
praying for it. It will wake you up out of your sleep. Me fighting for woman woke me up out of my sleep. Determining history to be my concentration in college woke me up out of my sleep. Stop ignoring the signs. Life is showing it to you. You're not confused. You're just not paying attention. I promise you it is there. Ownership. It's yours, especially as Black women. You, we have a history of pain, yes, but we also have a rich history of resiliency and triumph. It is in our blood to be resourceful and innovative. Remember that you are an asset to any team, any partnership, any organization. We provide a perspective that many others cannot. Be Black, be a woman, be a Black woman then add a little flavor on top. Wellness. Wellness, yes, it's, it's about holistic health, don't get me wrong, yes. But in this regard, when it comes to power, it is prioritizing mental strength and mental agility. This includes positive self-talk, being your own biggest cheerleader. We have to stop relying on others for our own happiness. We must find ways to be stronger thinkers. Our happiness is up to us, and I personally believe that it starts with what is in our head. That could be through continued education and networking and surrounding yourself with good people. Um, and yes, we can pray about it, but there are also benefits to actually talking to professionals about the things we are going through. We have to eliminate the stigma in the Black community about seeing, seeking mental health, seeking mental health. And speaking of networking, that brings me to E, environment. Since when I say environment, I'm referring to everything around you. It's your living space and where you should be at peace. It's your friends and who you surround yourself with. It's what's on your Instagram feed and your Instagram, your, your Facebook feed and your TikTok feed. The environment, the environments we are surrounded by need to encourage everything that I've previously mentioned. If they don't encourage it, enforce it, and or accelerate it, everything I just mentioned, it, it needs to, it can't be around you, period. It cannot be around you. You have to be specific about that. And finally, art. Reflection. Daily. Write down the things you are grateful for. Write down your prayers and plans. Make them real. Put them on paper. Be as detailed as possible. I write every single night. And I don't stop until my brain is empty. I used to write a page or so, right? But then I felt myself just stopping. I still had a little bit left in my mind. Now, I'm right. If it takes two pages to empty my brain, it takes two pages to empty my brain. If it takes three pages to empty my brain and put my plan on paper, then it takes three pages. I can go get another journal. I'm not saving space. I, gotta, I have to reflect. I have to empty my brain. No matter when you do it, Make reflection a part of your team, what your routine, whether you do it at night as I do or in the morning before you start your day. Again, power, purpose, ownership, wellness, environment, and inflection, reflection. I impeded my growth as an individual because I value popularity social acceptance, being liked, that truly left me lonely, void, and unfulfilled. We owe ourselves the best version of ourselves. Let others be others. Find your power and embrace your individuality. Thank you. Yes. What's up, hey. y'all? Hey. hey, girl. Listen, y'all. Jazz started our country. She started. Oh, you got the blaze. Hey. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to cry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> y'all, um, Jazz serves our country. And this is a day of celebration uh, for us. It's the, it's the final day of the summit. We've gone through a lot of stuff. It is the two-year anniversary of when Blaze started. But... I, in this moment, celebrate jazz. I, in this moment, celebrate jazz. Like, there has not been another military person that has graced this stage and poured into us. 
Never, right? She does this every single day. Literally, I've had conversations with Jazz in the middle of her trainings when she's out in the field and she comes to, to a vehicle real quick to talk to me. Like, I celebrate you, sis, because you are taking borders off of women who think they have no other choice, who think that even when they call such that is that is as great as military service, right, with a country on their back, you are still choosing your dream. Right. When I talked to Jazz in the middle of a training, right, it was it was it was a jump start session for the Blaze Business Intensive. Jazz told me her dreams. She in the military. She in the field. She don't have time to do anything but do what she's supposed <laughs> to do. But she called her time for that to tell me her dreams. And that is to be a speaker. And I said, oh, OK, bet we got a summit coming up. You're going to speak there. Like I celebrate you, man. I celebrate you, sis. I celebrate you, sis. Jazz said, man, like, I, I can't make none of these times because I actually have to do this military stuff. And the only time I have this pocket for, for a break, she's open her mouth. I bet you'll go when we don't have a DJ set at 1.30 Eastern, sis. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. <laughs> yeah. Take up that. Say what you need. Say what you need. And the universe will make provision. Period. Period. I, I celebrate. Baby, you... you what you're doing for us is like what what do you say about it you know what what you're doing for us is phenomenal okay halfway across the country staying up late putting in them crazy hours for us back here in the states right um or or around the, around the world at this point <laughs> you know um I appreciate you so, so, so much. I'm in the middle of moving. Please pardon the echo. Um, but I, I know I had to be here at this time. Y'all, we, we have to make a way for what it is we want. That's we right. always say, oh, we ain't got time. Or I got to do this and I got to do that. Build that community. Build that environment. Invest in yourself. That's right. Because right? if we don't, we're going to live with regret, die with regret. Ain't nobody got time for that. Crazy stuff is happening every single day. You and I both know that. All of us know that. Crazy That's stuff right. is happening every single day. Live your life. Right. Say, oh, live your life to the fullest. Or actually do it. That's actually right. do it for real. Right. You have to. That's right. So proud of you, sis. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to let the folk uh, say what they want to say to you, ask you questions, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of flowers that people are giving right now. Alexis okay. Miller says, thank you for your service, both to our country and our souls. I say and amen. I say and amen. Yvonne, uh, our usher, you, she our usher, Jazz, just know that. She's been holding it down in, in the comments, so much where to go. Um, but she says, please break down the letters in power again. Yes, absolutely. Power, purpose, ownership. And that's why I em emphasized um, being a black woman, uh, being black, being a woman, being a black woman, and sprinkling your own little, your flavor on the top. Um, w, wellness, mental wellness was emphasized there. Um, and environment was a community, uh, uh, what you see on your phone, the uh, toxic or not environment that you work in. And then R is reflection, journaling. What is that actually writing it down? If you are a put it in your notes on your phone person, okay, great, that works. That still counts as reflection. Um, but put it out there put it out there make it real make it real I, i'm gonna do this by this date smart goals i know we're all familiar with smart goals if we're done the blaze business intensive package smart goals if it if it's it gotta be realistic right mm -hmm. and, and and don't let's not let's not confuse realistic with what other people believe realistic to be right okay it, it, it's real i'm not i'm talking not realistic to fly, obviously, flap our wings and fly. But notionally, oh, we can fly as, as women, okay? Sure. Especially women, we can fly. Yeah. So good, so, so good. Thank you for that question, Yvonne. 
Um, the next one, our flowers, this is from Andrea. She says, thank you for sharing your story. I served in the army for over 10 years. It took so much from me. I'm on the journey to find myself again. Thank you for giving me the courage to dream again. Mm. Because it, <laughs> it will take everything out of you. You start the day at five in the five o'clock in the morning and sometimes don't get home until the sun is down. Like you don't even see the sun sometimes, you know, but you know, we, we got to make time for ourselves. What, 20 years, then you can retire. Some people get out sooner than, the, than 20 years, but then you're 40 and then you're playing catch up and no, for what? For what? Please dream, my sister, please dream. Dream and fulfill it. Please dream, never stop. And I think people probably think that that's cliche, but I got it, I got it tattooed on my, my uh, arm here. Live your dreams, you have to. So good, so, so good. Thank you so much for that question, Andrea. Um, I mean, for that comment, Andrea. And this one is a, a question from Kathy. Thank you, Jazz. How were you able to overcome your own back noise about being with your current spouse? Found the one, but scared to continue due to past relationship trauma. Asha. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kathy. Um, I ain't gonna say it was easy because it wasn't. My my husband will tell you that um, I constantly pushed him away. No, I don't want this. No, I don't want this for months, for months. But I kind of, I think that as I mentioned, I had to prioritize. Like Jasmine, you are happy right now. You, you feel good right now. You've never, and it was so uncomfortable because I don't think that I had ever felt like that for real. Felt like a queen, felt worth it, felt supported. Felt like I was, I was the most important thing ever. That's how I felt. And you have to prioritize that. And I'm just like, hmm, this back noise about what my grandma would think. By the way, my grandmother loves my husband. Um, she's 95 or 96 now, but anyway. Um, uh, it, I had to figure out if I wanted to prioritize what society felt or, or my past experience in this, in this situation. Do I want to keep that stuff in my mind or do I want to be miserable forever? Or do I want to get to happiness or do I want to start my healing journey? What, what do I want to do? You got to, it's, it's look in the mirror, Andrea, a, Andrea, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Look in the mirror and ask yourself that question. Do I want to stay miserable or do I want to get to happiness? And nothing saying you got to marry this individual. Just take it slow, right? Mm -hmm. See him or her, talk to him or her as much as you want to, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously communicate, right? But um, talk to and deal with that person as much as you want to until you can get over it. Pray about it though too. Mm -hmm. Pray about it, see somebody if you need to, but ask yourself that question. Okay. So good, so good. The next question is coming from Nicole Flair and she says, thank you for using your voice. Do you see a lot of women in the military that need help regaining their power being in a predominantly male profession? Um, yes, Nicole, I do. And um, it's pretty unfortunate. So I joined the army um, like 2010. And over time it's, it's grown. I've seen a lot of female empowerment uh, not, I won't say a lot, a few, a good bit of female empowerment groups kind of surface in the military. But where I am right now in El Paso, Texas, I'm not seeing any. So that's a calling that I need to kind of answer, per se, and get something going. Because everything is, like you said, predominantly male, male dominated. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about strength. A lot of the time, it's about strength in the military mm -hmm. and science tells us, not that we're making it up, we're not lazy, women are not lazy. Science tells us that women are less physically stronger, can be less physically stronger, right? Muscle density, all that science stuff. But that don't mean we are less, less smart or less of leaders or anything like that. And I need my newer um, soldiers, per se, to, to, to get with the program and understand that. They can still be leaders. Um, it does not help that the military, across the military, we just went through this, uh, that, not this, that M Vanessa Guillen situation um, that the world heard about. A lot of women lost the encouragement that they 
probably had to join the military or to stay in the military. But on the flip side of that, and I'll wrap it up, you did see a lot of women speak out about the things that they were going through. A lot of things that um, you know, they, they had kept quiet about or nobody else knew besides them and maybe their, their perpetrator. Mm -hmm. A lot of women found some closure and some comfort in speaking out. So yeah, I'm gonna start that program. Um, I don't know when, but there is definitely a need to start that program here at Fort Bliss, yeah. I come on, come on, big founder. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for that question, Nicole. And then um, the last question in the Q&A box is from Jasmine Prince. Jazz, uh, another BBI alumni, uh, she says, Jazz, you did, you did that, Miss Ma'am. What advice do you have for folks making space in their environment for their dreams to become, to really come to life? I'm gonna say that again. Jazz, you did that, Miss Ma'am. What advice do you have for folks making space in their environment for their dreams to really come to life? Hmm. I'll, I'll start with the fact that it's important that you, um, I'm huge into journaling, y'all. I'm so big into journaling. Write it down. Try to gain clear, clarity on what it is your dream is, right? Mm -hmm. But also find people who, who in, in like your community online, uh, whatever environment, find people who have similar dreams, right? Or in, are in similar spaces so you can begin to learn about it, right? But also something very important, as I mentioned in the, the talk, do not ignore the things that come to you in your sleep. Do not ignore the things that come to you like out of, out of the blue, it can kind of seem like. Don't ignore it because I think that I, I, I really believe in those things. Do not ignore it. Somebody tells you, hey, you, and I'm not sure what your dream is. I'd be curious to know, please send me an email. We can definitely talk about it later, but, um, cause I know we're short on time, but hey, you should be, for me, for example, hey, you should be a speaker. You always got good advice to tell people. A random person that I talked to for like 20 minutes. Like, how did you know <laughs> I needed to hear that? Like, just, just pay attention to what's going on around you and do your research and become an authority figure in whatever it is your dream may be. Um, but please send me an email. I would love to discuss further about that. Just, just do it. Just fulfill the dream. You got to do it. Do it scared. Like Casey would say, do, do it in fear. Do it scared. Okay. You, 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 will, you will be all right. And there's no, I, I forgot, I think it's Nelson Mandela says it's no like failure. It's, all, it's only lessons. All right. Sure. So just, just, just do it, sis. So good. Um, I celebrate you, Jazz. I, I celebrate you. I'm so proud of you, sis. Uh, somebody in the chat said they want one. So I don't uh, I don't sell Blaze merch typically. I did give these to BBI. Uh, Blaze is an intensive alumni who came to the homecoming event, but only for this summit, only for this summit, only for this summit. You can go right now uh, to Blaze groupllc.com slash shop and you'll see this hat and we don't push merch okay you can go to blazegroupllc.com slash shop and you can get this hat as well as a shirt that says safe spaces over everything mm -hmm. and y'all believe that now okay safe spaces over everything um i can't believe you're wearing that hat that's yeah, so yes. sweet that's so yes. sweet man okay well i love you this. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for giving us this time. Um, blessings to all that you're doing. Be safe. You are loved. And I'll talk to you soon. Love you, Casey. Thank you. See y'all. Bye. All right, y'all. So we are down to the last two sessions of the day. We are down to the last two sessions of the day. Okay. Um, and they are two workshops, right? And then we're done. Okay. The next one is coming from Lasara. Um, Lasara is her name too. Shadi has one name. That's it, Lasara. That's how you're gonna find on the internet. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, Lasara is doing a session called "Your Decolonized Body and Voice." Your Decolonized Body and Voice, and then we are moving into a session by Denicia Hilton Harper called "Build a 
home play shop. And we're done. I'll see y'all on the other side. Peace.